Hello everyone, I'm Coach Dickety, and today we're going to be talking about the DPS in Overwatch 2 and ways that you can try countering them. Now there's a lot of DPS in Overwatch 2, more than any of the other roles, so let's jump right into it. Ash has a longer range than most hitscan characters, and she has strong AoE burst from her dynamite and a pretty good playmaking tool with her ultimate bob, so you'll want to try and avoid her angles in open space for as long as possible and close the distance on her using flank routes. For tanks, you might want to try out D.Va against Ash since you can easily contest her angles anytime she pops up and you'll be able to eat up her dynamites with her defense matrix. For DPS playing against Ash, you can try out Widowmaker since you'll actually be able to outrange her in the duel and threaten her with that one shot kill. This is especially strong if Ash happens to be pocketed by a friendly mercy. And for supports, I'll recommend Ana into Ash since her strong single target healing can allow you to respond to any of Ash's burst damage and you've got the sleep dart to counter Bob. Next up is Bastion and he's fairly easy to counter, just try not to fight him anytime he's in his turret form and then when he's out of it and he sticks around in the front line, try to go all in to kill him. For tanks against Bastion, I'll recommend Sigma since you can deny most of the damage from his turret form with a single use of your kinetic grasp and then you can use your shield to try and split him from any of his teammates behind him and isolate him for poke damage. For DPS you can try out Genji against Bastion and use your mobility to avoid all that front loaded damage in his turret form but with your deflect sometimes you can even counter him even while he's in turret form but otherwise just look for those all in dashes and ultimates anytime he's in his recon mode. And for supports I'll recommend Baptiste here you should have no problem surviving Bastion's damage with your strong AoE healing and your immortality field and if he sticks around in the front line you can actually punish him with an aggressive amplification matrix. Cassie has been nerfed recently, but he's still a pretty strong DPS pick. You'll want to watch out for his two-shot burst combo and any quick flanks he'll be looking for to land that magnetic grenade. For tanks, I'll recommend Reinhardt, since Cassidy usually likes to be near the front line, you can easily pressure him out using your hammer swings and your shield to deny his damage. Just keep in mind that your shield won't block all of his ultimate if there's multiple targets standing behind your shield, so try to get back to that natural cover. For DPS, I'll recommend Ash, not only because you can outrange Cassidy in the duel, but also because you can provide more team-wide pressure with your dynamites as well as with Bob your ultimate. And for supports we'll pick up Moira here because it's very easy to survive Cassidy's pressure even if you get stuck by the magnetic grenade you've got your fade to keep yourself alive. Your close range healing should be more than enough to deal with any of Cassidy's damage output and anytime he goes for those short flanks you can throw a damage orb his way to make him back up. Now before we get any further guys don't forget to like the video if you like this type of content, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of it, and let us know down in the comments who's your go-to DPS pick this season. And if you're looking for more educational content, you're looking for more ways to improve your gameplay, then you should head over to GameLeap.com. Over on our website, you'll find hundreds of guides made by our top level coaches, and there's more being added every single week. So don't miss out. Go check out the website. You'll find in-depth hero courses and detailed guides about anything you want to know about the game. So just check out the link below this video or head over to GameLeap.com and get your membership started today. All right, next up is Echo. You'll want to make sure you're choosing positions that can easily avoid her spam damage and still be able to react to any time she flies up aggressively. But whenever she doesn't have that fly available, you'll want to punish her quickly anytime she's grounded. For tanks, you might want to try out Zarya. Diva seems like the easy answer here because you can keep up with her in the air, but Zarya responds to Echo really well thanks to your bubbles absorbing sticky bombs and your range being effectively the same range as Echo's focusing beam so you can shoot back at her anytime she goes all in. Also, Zarya is not the best target for Echo's ultimate duplicate since you start at zero energy and you need a good amount of damage before you can build that graviton surge. For DPS, try out Soldier 76 into Echo so you can poke her out with your hitscan range and use your self heal and mobility to survive any of her poke damage. Your goal isn't always to kill the Echo, but you want to stop her from going all in whenever she she wants to, so even if you can just drop her to around half HP, that'll get the job done. The exception being when you have Tac Visor available, if you catch her using flight in open space, you can almost always finish the kill with this ultimate. And for the support line, you can try out Baptiste, who puts out a very similar amount of damage compared to Soldier 76, so you'll be able to get that poke damage in. But Baptiste also has the regenerative burst that triggers at the same health percentage as Echo's focusing beam, so anytime she tries to go all in on a half HP target, you can quickly bring them back up to healthy numbers and make Echo do zero damage. You'll want to watch out for Genji's trying to act like ninja assassins getting on your backline and going for one-shot combos. To do this, you can try and poke them out and force their cooldowns defensively so that he can't find his dash combo, and you want to plan around his ultimate dragon blade as much as you can. For tanks, you can try out Winston since your unblockable damage makes it very easy to pressure Genji even with his deflect, and you can even chase him if he dashes away if the situation calls for it. And for his dragon blade, if you have primal available, you can just knock him away from any of his targets, preventing the Genji from getting any kills. You might not find any kills yourself with the primal, but I promise this trade is worth it. For DPS, you can try Torbjorn into Genji and 
let your turret mark any flank routes that Genji needs to approach you safely, and you've got your overload to keep you safe during his all-in, so you really shouldn't be afraid of him at all. Now, most supports will be pretty vulnerable to an assassin-type DPS like Genji, but picking Lucio can keep yourself and your team safe at ranges by using speed and boops to keep Genji at bay. Also, your sound barrier is a great counter to his dragon blade. Against Hanzo, you of course need to watch out for any long-range spam, since those arrows can just send you back to the spawn room out of nowhere, but you also don't want to underestimate his close-range damage burst from his storm arrows. Picking up Doomfist in the tank line can allow you to catch Hanzo out with your mobility and even kill him if he's playing solo, which he often does at range. You can also use Power Block to counter any burst damage from his storm arrows and allow yourself to extend that fight any further. A lot of DPS have trouble dueling Hanzo because of the threat of his one-shot potential, even in close range. But Genji's deflect can threaten Hanzo with his own shots, allowing him to get the upper hand. And you should be able to find these duels whenever you want, thanks to your mobility. For supports, you might want to try Kiriko into Hanzo, since you can use your mobility to threaten Hanzo anytime your DPS are getting aggressive. Maybe you can double up with them and find a 2v1. You can trade poke a little bit with Hanzo at range, just make sure you're not standing still and getting hit in the head, and your ultimate Katsune Rush should make Hanzo very uncomfortable since he doesn't really have very strong mobility. Playing against Junkrat is all about avoiding all of his spam damage, usually by outranging him and playing in open space so you're not getting caught in a room full of grenades. But in addition to that, you also need to watch out for any assassination attempts with his one-shot combo and, of course, any traps lying around. Tanks can pick up Zarya here because all that spam damage makes for very easy charge, and your bubbles can also counter Rip Tire when used properly. For DPS, I'm sure you've heard this one before, but swapping onto Farah against Junkrat basically makes you a better Junkrat since you'll be able to shoot at him very easily and he'll have a lot of trouble shooting back at you up in the air. For supports, we'll recommend Baptiste since your burst and AoE healing is great for surviving his spam damage and your immortality field is a great reaction to his Riptire, as long as you can heal back the damage it does after the fact. Against Mei, you want to make sure you're not taking too many long fights against her in close range, since the damage from her slowing beam will quickly add up. Also, you'll want to make sure you've got a plan ready to go anytime she puts her wall up, either to break it or escape from it. For tanks, I'll recommend Orisa, since you should have no problem surviving if you get walled off, since you've got plenty of defensive cooldowns, and with strong reaction time, you can even deny Mei's ultimate blizzard by eating it up with your javelin spin. DPS might want to try out Bastion, since Mei needs a lot of frontline pressure to find her most of her value, Bastion can deny her as well as any of her teammates from being there for too long, and can even break down her wall in the blink of an eye. And for supports, Kiriko's our go-to pick because your mobility can outplay the wall very easily just by climbing over it or TPing out if you need to, and your Suzu is there to cleanse any slowing or freeze effects from Mei's Blizzard. Just make sure if you're fighting Mei directly to get yourself on the high ground with your wall climb as often as possible since Mei will have a harder time dealing with you there. Against Farah, you want to avoid staying in long, open sightlines and find safe areas of the map where you can safely pressure her out, usually with some form of hitscan damage. For tanks, we'll recommend D.Va because there's simply no other tank in the roster that can keep up with Farah in the air, and Matrix is great for denying any of her damage, her boop attempts, and even her ultimate barrage. For DPS, of course, we're going to pick up a hitscan member here, but we're going to pick Ash specifically because the range and burst of her weapon helps potentially deal with a pocketed Farah, which, let's be honest, they're almost always pocketed. And her ultimate Bob is also great at creating space against a Farah team and is great for threatening Farah in the air as long as Bob has the right sightlines. And for supports, we'll pick up Ana here once again for more hitscan damage, but this time with no fall off thanks to the rounds from her scoped in shots. This this makes Ana better than even most DPS at poking out a Farah and making her play more defensively. On top of that, you've got your Sleep Dart to help counter Barrage, and your Nano Boost to help a DPS deal with the Farah aggressively or to be used defensively anytime Farah goes all in on them. Reaper does a ton of damage, but he does need to get pretty close in order to do it, so you want to make sure you can poke him out before he gets too close and be aware of any flank attempts or TP plays he's trying to make. For tanks, I'd recommend Sigma since you can deal with him as he approaches with your shield and your ranged damage, and you can also stun him out of his teleporter animation or even his ultimate with your accretion. You can also absorb his damage in close range very effectively with your kinetic grasp. DPS can try out Hanzo to put out much more pressure at range while still threatening Reaper up close thanks to storm arrows, and you can also use wall climb to make sure you maintain vertical angles against the Reaper to make it hard for him to stick on top of you. Sonic Arrow can also be very useful here to help sniff out enemy Reapers that are trying to sneak around on the flank. Lucio is a solid support pick against Reaper not only because speed helps you keep him at range, but also your boops are very easy against a close range hero, especially one that telegraphs his movement with a long teleport animation. Just just make sure you don't accidentally boop an ulting reaper into your backline because I promise you will never hear the end of it. Sojourn is all about her railgun, so you want to make sure you can respect her damage output whenever it's charged and only really try to all in her whenever she's already shot her railgun and hopefully when she's already used her slide. Doomfist can be a strong pick into Sojourn because he's got multiple mobility cooldowns that allow him to chase her even after she uses her slide, and blocking her railgun or her disruptor shot can easily charge up your punch. Doom also has a pretty small hitbox for a tank, which can make it hard for the Sojourn to charge up her railgun. For DPS, I'd 
pick up Tracer in order to be able to flank and wait for her to shoot her railgun before going all in, and you can even chase her after her slide with enough blinks. Or if that sounds like too much work, Pulse Bomb can usually get the job done too. Keep in mind that enemy sojourns will actually move more predictably when they have their railgun charged and they're trying to line up a shot, so this can be a prime opportunity for a Pulse Bomb, even if it is a little bit more risky. For supports, I'll recommend Mercy so that you can stay safely out of line of sight of the railgun while still being able to help your DPS out pressure the sojourn so that hopefully she doesn't get more than one shot off during a fight. Soldier 76 is a pretty straightforward DPS, you just need to make sure you're not playing into open sight lines for too long and to be ready for him to pop up in different locations thanks to his sprint, especially when he has tac visor available. Reinhardt should have no problem blocking pretty much all of Soldier 76's damage thanks to his shield, just make sure you're taking the time to clear out high grounds to make Soldier's position more predictable during the fight. DPS can try Widowmaker into Soldier to try and lock down safe sight lines to prevent Soldier from taking too many different angles. And even if you can't finish the kill every single time, scaring him off with a well-timed body shot can deny a lot of his value. In the support line similar to Widowmaker, Zenyatta can help lock down those important sight lines to prevent Soldier from approaching in interesting positions by just putting out damage and of course applying his Discord Orb. And in case you need something to survive Tac Visor, Transcendence is a great tool in most situations. Sombra is inherently hard to predict because of her stealth, but you should always try to maintain a safe position position anytime you think she's around. That means staying close to natural cover in case you get hacked and you become her target so that you can react safely and stay alive long enough to get your cooldowns out. Diva is a good pick for tanks into Sombra because it's easy to try and force her out of stealth with your unlimited ammo, you can just spray and pray in every direction, and you can usually survive being hacked yourself or easily react to allies being hacked thanks to your defense matrix. For DPS I'd recommend Torbjorn because he's very individually safe, again he's very tanky, he's got overload to survive a lot of all-in attempts, and his turret can deny a lot of aggression from people like Sombra. Also, Molten Core can be used defensively after an enemy EMP to deny them from following up into that space. For supports, Brigitte is a very safe pick into Sombra. Just throw a repair pack on any allies that get hacked, and if you get hacked yourself, it doesn't stop your Inspire from activating, so you can usually keep yourself alive. Also, Rally can be used to shut down enemy EMPs, but you'll need to use it proactively. You can't use this on reaction like other defensive ultimates, you'll need to get that overhealth ticking before the EMP comes out. When playing against Symmetra, make sure you're watching out for any sneaky teleporter plays, those pesky turrets, and make sure you're not staying in close range for too long because her damage will be ramping up. For tanks, I'll recommend Wrecking Ball into Symmetra since it's very easy to displace her and prevent her from getting a lot of her damage off. Also, if her team is going for a TP play, that's a very easy pile driver engage that finds a ton of value. Even Symmetra's ultimate photon barrier doesn't really deny much of Wrecking Ball's kit, you can still place your mines on both sides or on one side to force them to the other side, and you can still roll through it and get all your collision damage off. For DPS, Junkrat does a great job of dealing with Symmetra because you'll simply be putting out more consistent pressure than her in the front line, and you've also got the mobility to escape her if she does get too charged up. You also have huge AoE damage potential and any teleporter plays, and a Riptire can even outplay the Photon Barrier if you're patient enough with it. For supports, we'll recommend Moira because it's usually pretty easy to outheal a lot of Symmetra's damage into the front line, and you've got your Fade to reposition defensively if necessary. Keep in mind that both your Orbs and your Coalescence will both pass through Symmetra's Barrier, so it should be no problem to find value with those during her ultimate. Torbjorn's not usually a character you need to counter, but he is usually one you need to deal with in some way. Try to break his turret and force him to use overload defensively by poking him out at range, and make sure you're not going all in on him unless you know he's truly isolated. For tanks, I think Sigma's a great pick because you should be able to pressure him out of the front line and his turret out from a safe distance while slowly approaching the rest of his team. You should have no problem blocking most of Torbjorn's damage with your shield and your kinetic grasp, and even when he's using his ultimate, you can block the projectiles of Molten Core with your shield or eat them up with your grasp. For DPS, Far is an obvious pick because it's very easy to outrange and outmaneuver the Torbjorn when he's locked on the ground by just flying above him. You can also usually find a safe angle to break his turret before the fight breaks out, and while he is tankier than other DPS, that won't mean much when you go in for your barrage. And for supports, we'll recommend Zenyatta because you actually can out-damage Torbjorn at range with your orbs and easily break turrets as well from safe angles, and your discord will make him much squishier and a much more diveable target if you're playing with fast-paced DPS. And of course, it doesn't hurt to have his transcendence available anytime he's going for his molten core. Trace is a very difficult hero to directly counter in Overwatch because her mobility is simply so strong. In any case, make sure you're not getting isolated by an enemy tracer since she's one of the best duelists in the entire game, and as much as possible try to scout her out and poke her out as she's approaching to force her to use multiple blinks just for her engage so she'll have less later on for the rest of the fight. Tanks might want to try Roadhog into Tracer, which doesn't sound very intuitive, but he's one of the few tanks that can actually deal with her thanks to the threat of his hook. Even if you can't finish the kill every time, you'll almost certainly force her to use Recall, which basically denies her a lot of value for the rest of the fight. For DPS, I'd recommend Ash, simply because your scoped-in shots can one-shot headshot an enemy tracer 
tracer, which is very threatening for the tracer player. Just make sure you're able to play strong enough positions so that you can see her coming and threaten that space before she's right on top of you. And for supports, we'll recommend Brigida because you've got your shield to block tracers all in attempts, you can even block pulse bomb with it, and your whip shot and shield bash can easily force out tracers cooldowns. Even if you only get a blink, it causes tracer to find less aggressive value for the rest of the fight. Also, rally makes both you and your team much harder for tracer to kill. Widowmaker is another hero which can be pretty tricky to counter simply because her range is completely unmatched in the game, but you need to know where she is at all times and try your best to avoid her sight lines as often as possible. And when you do find yourself fighting a Widowmaker, make sure you're not re-peeking the same or similar angles too often because you'll likely be holding her crosshairs there trying to line up a headshot. For tanks, I'd recommend Winston. For the dive threat, you want to be able to get on top of Widowmaker and force her into more defensive angles as often as possible, but even if you can't jump on top of her directly, your bubble will block her line of sight better than any other tank in the game. For DPS, we can pick up Genji and use his mobility to approach Widowmaker safely on the flank and go all in anytime she finds herself alone, which is fairly often. And if she does catch you in her sights, you can go for the deflect play and maybe even land a headshot of your own. And for supports, I'll recommend Mercy again so you can stay safely out of line of sight of the Widowmaker while still finding full value as a support. You'll be able to help your DPS duel her, help keep your tanks alive and stuff like that. And if Widowmaker does find a lucky pick, you can hopefully go for the res and even up those numbers. And while I don't always recommend it, there are situations where if you pop Valkyrie, you can go aggressive on the Widowmaker yourself with the unlimited ammo on your pistol, as long as you've got some creative movement to avoid her shots. There are so many different DPS heroes in Overwatch 2, and for the most part, they all have their own very distinct playstyles that you should be learning and playing around. So I hope the advice in this video helps give you some good ideas about how you can counter these DPS in your game so that if there's a pop-off player on the enemy team, you might have some go-to answers to shut them down. Don't forget to go check out GameLeap.com. Over there, you can use our hundreds of guides made by top-level coaches to help you improve at any aspect of the game. So whether you're a beginner or you're trying to push to a new peak this season, you'll find something that can help you climb. So head on over to GameLeap.com and get your membership started today. That's going to be all for me today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.